History, I guess? Let's go. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part is now a part of history. Today we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. As you should remember from our last class, Area Zero's great era of exploration began about 2,000 years ago. This era lasted for approximately 1,000 years, but not a single soul was able to venture all the way to the desert reaches of Area Zero. Deepest reaches. They're what I say? I don't remember. It's in the past now. Having poured out much of its human and financial resources into the exploration of Area Zero for so long, the Paladin Empire fell into decline. 200 years later, or 800 years ago, the Empire and its surrounding nations united into one entity. This was the formation of Paldia as we know it. Today. Ah yes, the... the this very academy where you now fill, uh, where you're now filling your minds with knowledge was also apparently established at that time. In fact, the school building, though entirely, well, though certainly having undergone repairs through the years, is just as it was uh, built so long ago. You can still, you could, they climbed it up even back then too, <laughs> or something. This very structure is a piece of history. Ah, things of old are truly splendid. I would certainly prefer it not to have uh, the Pokeball por portion, though. A relatively new add-on, addition. Aha, perfect timing to make eye contact, young Jeremy. Oops. Let's see if you've been listening to my lecture. Tell me, approximately how many years ago was this academy of ours established? Uh, 800 years ago. Correct, I see the look of concentration on your face was indeed just that. I hate nothing more than when a student only pretends to listen. Well, at least, you, you, at least you're not the language teacher. Haha, <laughs> got him. This academy was constructed exactly 805 years ago, to be precise. In other words, your academy here is 805 years old. At that time, at the time, it offered state-of-the-art facilities and a uniquely innovative curriculum. As such, people used to say, "Those seeking knowledge need to look no further than the uh, oranges of Paldia." That's right. They were referring to Ninjara Academy. I don't think they were. <laughs> Something tells me they weren't, but it, sure, I don't know. It is said that this proverb of sorts was even used outside of the Paldia region. Oh, is it that time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. Our next class will be our midterm exam. Bring the wonders of history to the forefront of your mind, minds in preparation. This is so nice not being in language classes anymore. It's just like real life. I'm sure, I'm pro, I mean, I don't know. I haven't been in language classes in real life, so. But if you have been in uh, language classes in real life and you, you understand what I'm saying, or can agree with what I'm saying at the very least, I don't know, say something. Anyway, history mid midterm. Greetings, my little students. It is time for our midterm examination. Summon your histori historical knowledge from the dark re- What is happening with your hair? I'm a little bit concerned by that. Ah, it's moving, it's alive! Recesses of your minds and answer the questions. What is the name of the geological formation in the center of the Paldia region? The center of Paldia. The Paldian Valley floor. The Great Crater of Paldia. I mean, it's supposed to sound epic, but if you say it like that, it doesn't, does it? I was long believed to rest on the depths of Area Zero. 
A treasure. How many years ago did the Paladin Empire begin to rule this region? 2,000 years ago. How many years ago was this academy built? 805 years ago. Those seeking blank need to look no further than the oranges of Paldia. Knowledge. The time is up. Put your pet writing utensils down. That last question was a freebie. Even the last uh, least capable of you surely padded the, your score there. I sincerely hope you did anyway. So ends our mid midterm examination. You may ask for your oh the hair, the hair. You may ask for your scores at the front desk. Why is the hair twitching? Ah, it's not as bad as language studies, but it's n uncomfortable. Fleshy hair is what I'm imagining. Five out of five, nice. More XP Kenny's S. I'm hoping that I get some sort of good reward for doing all these lessons. Like, a final final reward after doing all of the final exams. I wonder if there's a midterm exams thing though. If I did all the midterms by this point. I don't know. I'm gonna need the toilet so much later on. I've been drinking water in between like every time I'm talking, which is every loading screen, so that's something. And I've also been drinking sometimes when I'm dying, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about this now, but you know, I wouldn't be the first, so. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part of history. Oh, the hair, the hair. <laughs> I was hoping to continue unraveling the marvels that history has presented to us today. Your hair twitching is now part of history. However, I imagine your ability to concentrate has been spectacularly derailed by my midterm. I suppose changing things up for fun and variety may be a good idea every now and then. So allow me to tell you... An old fairy tale that has been passed down in Paldia for generations. I'm, st I'm just still watching the hair. Once upon a time, there was a king who very much enjoyed collecting treasure. He was particularly fond of treasures from other countries. One day a merchant from the east heard rumors of the, this king and came to meet him. The merchant laid out, I, out four treasures in front of the treasure-loving king. The four treasures were as follows. A vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. Seeing such rarities before him, the king leaped for joy. He showered the merchant with gold coins and claimed all four of the treasures for himself. Aha, perfect time to make eye contact, young Jeremy. Answer me this. I said that one of the treasures was a set of tablets. Where do you think these tablets were? Medicine that you chew. Uh, handheld electronic devices or wooden planks for writing on. <laughs> Actually, I don't really know. I would have thought wooden planks for writing on? But if it's medicine that you chew, I'm gonna be mad. Okay, good. Correct, your daily pursuit of knowledge serves you well. These particular tablets were wooden and used as a writing medium in the East in ancient times. As you may know, they fell out of popular use as paper became more universally available. For the king to consider these paper substitute, su substitute treasures, they must have been of superb quality. That or perhaps they had more, some amazingly profound teachings written on them. So the king obtained these four treasures, and on that very night, it is said that a terrible disaster rained down upon his castle, reducing it to, a rub to rubble by dawn. Does it have anything to do with your hair moving like that? Oh, is that the time already? Wasn't done with my story, but alas, so ends today's lesson. If you are interested in how the story ends, you may come see me outside class hours. Well, I guess I have to do that now at some point. 
once I'm done with all the rest of the lessons. History 5. Greetings, my love students. Whatever you did yesterday was now the part of history. Today we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. I trust that you all remember our lesson before, the midterm exam concerning the great creature of Paldia and its interior, Area Zero. This mysterious creature captured the imaginations of many, including the former Paldian Emperor. 200 years ago, a group of explorers claimed to have finally reached its depths. The name of the team that achieved this great feat was the Area Zero Expedition. The team is said to have been made up of Powder's best and brightest, skilled battlers, brilliant researchers, and talented individuals of all kinds. Among the list of team members was the same with the name was the name of a, a man who was an author and brilliant natural historian, Heath. After returning from the expedition to Area Zero, he used his literary talent to record the events of the expedition and publish them. Aha, perfect time to make eye contact, young Jeremy. Let's see if you're paying attention. What was the name of the team that made the f uh... <laughs> the Survey Corps? I'm pretty sure it's the Area Zero Expedition. Correct! To pick up on uh, and remember a term, I simply slipped into the flow of the lecture. You really are quite the clever one. The correct name for this team was the Area Zero Expedition. The record of their activities written by the expedition member Heath can be found in bookstores and the like, even today. This record is now known as the Scarlet Book. At that, at that time, the entire region of Paldia was absolutely buzzing about Area Zero. The Scarlet Book was so popular that practically everyone had a copy. However, the book itself was full of fantastical descriptions and illustrations of things that could never be thought of as real. The masses began to call Heath a liar. Even the truth of the expedition making it to the bottom of the crater was called into question. The Scarlet Book was condemned to the shelves of used bookstores as just another book of wild paranormal stories. There's a copy of one of the book uh, of one of the bookshelves. Copy on one of the bookshelves. On the ground floor of the entrance hall. Feel free to have a read if you're interested. Are there... How many books are there to read that I'm not gonna read? Oh, is that the time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. We will unravel more of history... Uh, history's enigmas together next time. We're almost done with... History. And then it's just... The last one. Which I can't remember. Battle studies. Right. That's the one I should have been focusing on the most. Let's do the last of history. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part of history. Today is our last class, so I'd like you to, uh, I'd like to unravel <laughs> the missed marvels of hi that history has presented to us. One last time. In our last class, I thought. Class, I imagine if you could learn everything you needed to in like a day. <laughs> in the last class, I taught you about the Area Zero Expedition of 200 years ago, correct? The last 200 years ago is not that long ago. Not that long ago at all. How unfortunate that our history lessons must march so inexorably toward the future. Would it not be more of an adventure to march toward the past instead? To start from our present and study history in reverse? Ah, uh, I think that might be hard to follow, to be honest. Indeed, it may, may be difficult to understand the flow of events, how one thing leads to another. If we were to trace history in reverse, huh, I, I suppose they have no choice but to let the flow of time carry us toward the future. 
this last le class of ours, I shall fill your minds with the history of the terrestrial, uh, terrestrial phenomenon. The technology behind Terra Orbs has its origins in Area Zero. Even after the Area Zero expedition supposedly reached the crater's deepest depths, others continued to explore the area. And around 140 years ago, Pokemon cloaked in a mysterious light were discovered there. As you may have already guessed. These were, in fact, terrestrialized Pokemon. However, those who discovered these Pokemon brought them out of Area Zero. The light faded and the terrestrial phenomenon remained a mystery for quite some time. However, ten years ago, uh, that might as well be present day, a certain someone you have definitely heard of un unraveled this mystery. Uh oh, I made eye contact. Aha, perfect timing to make eye contact, young Jeremy, ask me this. What is the name of the famous professor who unraveled the terrestrial phenomenon mystery? Uh, Professor Sada. Correct, to think that you, a new transfer to our academy, could correctly answer this question. You must be a very diligent in your study. You must be very d diligent in your studies. Approximately 10 years ago, a professor named Sada unra unraveled the mystery of the terrestrial. I can't say words anymore. Terrestrial phenomenon. She discovered that the shining crystals down in Area Zero, or rather, the energy that they emit, is what causes Pokemon to terrestrialize. This led to the, uh, the professor to invent Terra Orb technology and develop a, pr a practical use for it. This technology was shared with both the Pokemon League and our academy. Rumor has it that Cla uh, Director Clavel was one of the researchers on the professor's team. Alas, that's th this story is much less exciting now that someone we all know appears in it. Modern history truly is dull, isn't it? Wow, so rude. Thus ends my history classes. Our next session uh, will be our final exam. Bring the wonders of history to the forefront of your minds in preparation. I think she's a bit backwards in the way she should be thinking about modern history. Isn't now the most interesting time in history? Isn't the future about to be the next most interesting time in history? The future is the the dream. I don't know. The greatest view is the future. That's why I said a few episodes ago or something like that. It's possibly more than a few episodes ago, but you know. That's just how I roll. Greetings, my little students. It is time for your final examination. Summon your historical knowledge from the dark recesses of your minds and answer the questions. What is the area with the great power called? Area zero. Uh, how many games with the cat have you found it? 805. Which of these did not appear to power fair? How about the four treasures? A folding fan? Which area expedition member wrote the record of the team's activities? Thief, Leaf, Heath. It was Heath. Many years ago, did Professor Sada invent the Terra Orbs? Ten years ago. Modern history truly is incredible. Unlike some people seem to think about it. Maybe that's why her hair's twitching. She's actually just despising modern history. Like an untrue historian. Your time is up. Put your writing utensils down. You must excuse that last question. It is too shallow and ridiculous to be on- I DISAGREE! But alas, the director forced me to include it. P Ten points to the director. So ends our final examination. You may ask for your scores at the school's front desk. Never again will I have to see that hair twitch. <laughs> Maybe. But why- why don't you like- your- that's a, such a weird, quirky thing to not like, not not like or appreciate the modern history. Five out of five correctly. All those candies, and now we're up to the last class. Battle studies.
has it is it really gonna like take me like six episodes to get through all of these and that's not including the pre like half of the the lessons that we've already done another day another round of battle study osu let's get right into it Last time we learned about terror raid battles. Did any of you have a chance to try them out? Oh yeah, I did. I got so many candies. It's crazy. Terror Pokemon are super strong. And the more difficult ones will use an even tougher tactic that you'll need to deal with. I'm talking about their terror shield. Weapons while Pokemon has its terror shield up, you ask? Well, it's I'll t it'll take way less damage for one. It has a huge effect on morale, too. That when trainers see that shield go up, they feel doomed. Like there's no way to win the battle. So here's a question for you. If the Pokemon you're battling puts up its Terra Shield, what should you do? Trust lies and attack it. Call your parents. Close your eyes and give in. Oh my goodness, this is- that's depressing. <laughs> That's right, you're, so, you're a regular Terra Raid Battlemaster, aren't you, new kid? Regular attacks won't, don't work so well against Pokemon that have their Terra Shield up. But having your Pokemon Terrestrialize is an effective method to overcome that issue. A Terrestrialized Pokemon will do more damage to shielded Pokemon, especially if it uses moves that match its Terra type. Dealing enough damage to a Pokemon with its Terra Shield up can destroy the shield and break the Pokemon's stance. This means that uh, it's important to properly time your trustalization tr trustalizing in terror raid battles. In conclusion, as they say, fight fire with fire and terror with po terror Pokemon with terror Pokemon. Be sure to work together with your teammates to smash through your opponent's terror shield. Oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really dive the point home. Drive the point home. But I guess we're out of time once again. Next class will be our midterm exam. Aim for a perfect score. Osu Osu. This this song's still really good. I'm possibly noticing it now. I don't know why I'm noticing it now after the hours I've been doing classes. Oh, it's Battle Studies midterm. Sorry to all of you who went to the schoolyard first before finding the right room. I guess we can do our tests in the classroom, at least. It might be hard to write your answers out on the field. <laughs> Alright, time to put on your game faces and do battle with those test sheets. The higher Pokemon special defense, the less damage it takes from... Special attacks. Which the following has no effect on... Uh, Moves damage. The move's name. <laughs> then why is that the answer? <laughs> How many trainers are on a terror raid battle team? Four. What is an effective method for breaking an opponent's terror shield? Cheering. <laughs> Dressalizing and attacking. What is Miss Dangerous' favorite type? Um. Psychic. Or is it fighting? It might be fighting. Fighting, fighting. Time's up, put your pencils down. I saw you giving it everything you've got. I'm sure you'll all get perfect scores. Well done, everyone. You can ask for your scores at the front desk. Five of five, nice. Five XP candies, S. I'm surprised I got five out of five, really. But that's pretty good then. I'm learning. I didn't do great in school, but I learned how to learn. And that's the important thing to learn in school, is to learn how to learn, because that way you can keep learning after school. And also in school, probably, if you learn how to learn quickly.
Another day, another random battle study. Osu, let's get right into it. You all gave everything you had on the midterm exams. Well done. We'll resume our regular classes today, so keep up that energy for the second half of the term. Hey, have you all been using the R button to send out your Pokemon? If you do, your Pokemon will run off the in the direction you're facing. It's a super useful tactic that lets your Pokemon pick up faraway items for you. And that's not all. If there's a wild Pokemon near where you sent your Pokemon, they'll start battling each other. But they don't do that in the wild, because that's just, they're, they're all peaceful in the wild. We're, we're the ones causing all the damage. We call those battles, auto battles. Just as the name implies, your Pokemon will act on its own during auto battles. Meaning you won't have to give it any commands. If your Pokemon wins, it'll get XP points. Just like you would with regular battles. If you make good use of your, th these battles, they can be really efficient. A, a really efficient way to train your party. But you'll want to remember that Pokemon won't evolve or learn new moves right away if they level up from an auto battle. Also, if a Pokemon loses an auto battle, it will come back with just a small amount of HP left. Make sure to heal it up right away. Whoops, I just about did the whole class as a one-sided lecture. Does anyone have any questions so far? Uh... No questions here. Great, you're all really good at this. Can't wait to see where you go from here. Even during auto battles, our Pokemon are out there battling for us. They're trainee trainers. Keep an eye out. Uh, keep an eye on them as much as possible, and if it looks like they're going to lose, be sure to have them retreat. I just started quoting the Settlers Rising of the Empire, don't worry about it. Also, this goes without saying, but Pokemon with the low HP are already worn out. They probably won't enjoy auto battles as much, so you don't work them too hard, okay? In conclusion, Water battles only work if a trainer and their Pokemon have a relationship of mutu mutual trust. Be smart and with how you use auto battles, so you don't lose the trust of your Pokemon. Oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home. But I guess we have run out of time, as usual. Class is over for now. Take care, you little, little rascals. I would have gone with scoundrels, personally. But Rascals works too. Battle stays five. I've gone through so much water. <laughs> it's crazy. Another day, another round of battle study. Osu, let's get right into it. I hope you gave auto battles a shot, like we talked about le last class. Making good use of auto battles will let you train you a up a bunch of Pokemon, different Pokemon, except you can't send out multiple at once. It's also an efficient way to gather the Pokemon materials you need to make TMs. I guess you don't really need to send out more than one Pokemon at a time, but still. It'd be cool to just send them off. A uh, good way to get materials, you need to make TMs out of TM machine. Speaking of which, have you been using the TM machines? Nope. Not at all. I sure hope so, because it's pop quiz time. To create TMs, you need Pokemon materials and one other thing. Anyone remember what that is? Uh... Money. <laughs> LP, probably. Looks like you're already a TM machine pro, new kid. Despite having never made one. The correct answer is League Points, or LP for short. You can give LP and Pokemon materials to a TM machine to create TM bat uh, t TMs. TM battles. My mind has gone someplace I don't even understand. But that's not all. You can also exchange Pokemon materials at TM machine to get LP. TM battles actually sounds interesting. Like instead of having Pokemon and moves, you use TMs. I don't know how well that would work, but it sounds interesting, at the very least, so... You can also exchange Pokemon materials out of TM machine to get LP. I recently heard about some shady individuals getting LP illegally using a technique called... Hacking, or something like that. 
I don't want any of you getting involved in bad stuff like that, got it? Anyway, you can also add TMs that you want to make from your watch list. This will let you keep an eye on the materials you need to gather. In conclusion, in order to make TMs, you need Pokemon materials. And if you want to get hold, hold of lots of materials, you'll have to battle all kinds of Pokemon. Oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home. But I guess we're just gonna wait for another time. We're never gonna do hands-on practice. Class is over for now. Take care, you little rascals.